Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with State Representative Kirk Schering uh, about the recent vote for a speaker <laughs> for our House of Representatives in our at the state level uh, in Columbus. And um, Kirk, it's it's just quite a story. First of all, was everyone aware of that 1853 law, or how did you come up to to discover it and find out that that's what you had to go by, or did everyone know about it already? No, I think most people did not know about it, but uh, for uh, myself and uh, others, particularly myself as the interim speaker and working with our uh, house clerk, uh, we were keenly aware of it. And that was one of the reasons, frankly, as I stated earlier, that I insisted that we go to that uh, speaker election Mm -hmm. with 50 votes. I said in part was because not only that constitute the the majority caucus that we are, but also you needed 50 votes to to, uh, sustain the rule of the chair. And, you know, when you're in this, what is a hotly contested political situation where, uh, again, two of our members competing uh, for the speakership for next session of the General Assembly, uh, our Democrat colleagues smelling uh, uh, or seeing blood, I should say, and, and, and seeing opportunities to uh, maybe uh, make some political gains. Uh, you 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 and you want to go into uh, what could be and was proven to be a marathon uh, floor session, uh, knowing that you could have the rule of the chair sustained. And so to that point, uh, yeah, uh, I think it was right around the ninth ballot. Uh, one of my very own members uh, on the majority side uh, made a motion to recess. And uh, I, you know, have been around for a while, so I quickly said, all those in favor signify by saying aye, all those opposed say nay. And when you're at the uh, dais, well, I've learned uh, yeah. over time, when you're at the dais, and I've seen it many times, mm-hmm. uh, the person who has the gavel, has control over what is seen and what is heard. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I asked for that voice vote, yay or nay, for uh, having a recess, I heard more people saying nay. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, seriously, if you watch the video, I think uh, what I heard was correct. But anyways, they, what they were trying to do was to recess on the ninth ballot, knowing as we approached the 10th ballot, ballot and then to the 11th ballot, that uh, there would just be a plurality. So they were going to try to recess to see if they could work out a deal where uh, there could be a, uh, a surprise and one of the four nominees might be able to um, pull off a victory by mm. pulling votes away uh, and getting that point where there would be a plurality. But you heard enough nays to not let them have that recess and you had to keep the vote, you had to keep moving forward, yes? Yep, um, uh, yep. Kept on plowing through. We were already a couple hours into the process. Wow. And I, and, uh, but there could have been a whole array of other things right. that could have been brought forward a way to challenge the rule of the chair. And at that point in time, I did not have 50 votes to sustain the rule of the chair. Right. Uh, so, you know, it could have been. And, you know, th- this kind of stuff, frankly, is the kind of stuff that we have been seeing so much in Washington for so long. And we've been able to avoid it. In, in Columbus, I still think we'll be uh, able to stay away from the gridlock that we've been seeing in Washington, D.C. But uh, we, we saw something again, and I'm not overstating it, that was truly historic uh, in that two-month period, or almost two-month period, from the time the Speaker Rosenberger resigned and then the time that we elected our new speaker, Speaker Ryan Smith. Oh, yes. It's kind of amazing. So when you say that this was the first time it had been used since the law was written in 1853, does that mean they did not even use it in 1853? And what was on their minds, I uh-huh. wonder, to, to yeah. write this law? Yeah. Well, guess what? I think there are some people that might want to change it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, they're, they're but it they're, served they're, us well, No. Well, you know, there are two schools of thought on that. Let me okay. just give you a little bit of history on that. One, okay. one is that uh, th- this resignation of Speaker Rosenberger was the, the third resignation since that law wow. was uh, enacted in 1853. 
the two previous times prior to the Rosenberger resignation, uh, when they had uh, uh, a session to elect the speaker, the speaker was elected uh, unanimously, again, because of longstanding traditions that uh, you don't contest a speaker's election. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're living in different times. It's harder to get people to agree to things. So that's why, uh, again, uh, we had to go through so many different ballots. Now, from what I understand, and all of this has been confirmed by the uh, Ohio History Connection, previously known as the Ohio Historical Society. So prior to 1853, uh, there was a speaker election that uh, didn't go according to plan, and, and uh, they said there was really no uh, I guess it actually went on longer and longer. And it, it, and, uh, and so this idea that after 10 uh, votes, uh, 10 ballots, that you could win by a plurality actually was to, designed to shorten the process. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, at, at some point in time, you have to say, okay, look, we're not going to get a majority, so let's just go with the plurality. I think, you know, you, you make such an Im important point that we've really at the state level seen quite a bit of working together across the aisle to move forward in in a way that we kind of maybe wish Washington could learn from or follow suit. You just kind of think, okay, if we can accomplish things together at the state level, can't we also do this at the national level? Do you see things getting more... Mm, argumentative at the state level? Does leadership trickle down in that way so that, please say we're not having these kind of same problems at the state that they've been having at the national for some time? We're not close to Good. Uh, the <laughs> chaos and the uh, acrimony and the, uh, the gridlock that we've seen in Washington. Right. Uh, and as you know, there's a lot of good people who serve in the U.S. Senate and the United States House of representatives yes but 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 you know uh in the house of representatives the u.s house of representatives there's 435 members of course 100 members in the senate and um you know if you, when you're trying to get 435 people to agree to something that's that's not an easy thing to do true but uh with all that said we're, we're still getting things done the session days after that uh uh uh, speaker's election, we were able to accomplish a lot of things in a bipartisan way. So we, we're we still getting things done. We've, we've passed since, since the uh, speaker's election, um, you know, probably a, a somewhere in around of maybe 50, 60 pieces of legislation. Already, really? Yeah, right. And so, well, there was a little bit of a backlog. We don't typically do that many, uh, but we had to catch up. So, and, yeah. and, and good bills, bills, again, that had been totally vetted. One thing, too, when I say that, there's some people saying, oh, my goodness, you're making more laws. Well, we call it the revised code for a reason. We're revising laws. We're updating laws. We're trying to make, you know, for instance, you know, we're trying to, to uh, reduce the burden of regulation on businesses. We're trying to make our tax policy more competitive. We're trying to make our schools safer. Uh, we're trying to, you know... Uh, help people. For instance, we a while back passed a, a bill in the House that uh, dealt with payday lending and, mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that folks who need, you know, quick uh, emergency dollars who are living paycheck to paycheck are not caught in a debt trap. So, yes. you know, uh, so those are things we can come together on a bipartisan way. And so we, we still do that. Uh, it's just uh, we, we, we broke with the tradition during that, that uh, two-month period but in part because there was a vacuum there. Uh, again, having a speaker's resignation uh, since 1853, it's only happened three times. So <laughs> it doesn't go. happen often. That's right. Um, you mentioned a video. Can we see all this taking place? Because this is historic. Yes. Uh, all you have to do is get on the uh, OhioHouse.gov uh, website. That's one place. It's archived. We, in fact, we've been archiving our our uh, floor session since 1996. So you can really find a lot of interesting stuff if you get on that website. The other thing, the Ohio Channel uh, also uh, has it archived, and you can uh, get on the Ohio Channel and, and find it there. Very, it very on cool. June, on June 6th, 
So that if you just look for the session, click on, on June sixth because that was the vote day. Yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> ten times. Ten, and you went to the eleventh. <laughs> make sure you make up a lot of popcorn. Yes. <laughs> set aside plenty of viewing time. Yeah. <laughs> or, or if you're suffering from insomnia, you know, just put it on and. And it won't take you long, you'll fall asleep, because it went on for hours. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What are you working on now? What's in the hopper? Well, I'm always working on things that helps my my community, uh, you know, things that uh, uh, will help us as we look to secure the 2020 NFL draft, uh, some things that deal with uh, uh, those folks who are resisting arrest. A local law enforcement officer got me involved with that. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, you know, school safety, those are things that uh, are always important now more than ever with some mm-hmm. of the things that have happened nationally in regard uh, to the safety of our, our students. Uh, I work very closely with our uh, uh, education uh, service center superintendent, Joe Chaddock, and our, our sheriff, uh, George Meyer, uh, working with Mayor Catazero Perry on some things that she wants to do with the uh, former Maslin Affinity Hospital and yes. Mayor Bernadette with downtown redevelopment districts and innovation districts and some ideas we have for uh, what we now call Market Square, what we hope to someday call Centennial Plaza, um, mm-hmm. which would be a compliment to uh, what's going on at the Pro Football Hall of Fame Village. Yes. So, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of constituent work. It just seems like uh, there's so many things nationally that become, <laughs> we take it back again to all politics is local, especially sure. when we're looking at school safety and, and thought of that as a national issue. But boy, this year it brought it home, did it not? And um, sure. yes, sure. suddenly those politics are local as well. And through uh, Superintendent Joe Chaddock, uh, I worked on uh, getting some legislation passed, uh, and that because of that legislation, uh, we will have a good number of uh, our school districts will be working in cooperation and in concert with our educational service center uh, to have a ballot issue that will be on the ballot on August 7th that will take a a certain millage uh, uh, that will then be assigned for exclusively for the uh, safety and welfare of our students, both as it relates to their their protection from uh, some of these violent acts that mm-hmm. we've seen across the nation, but also mm-hmm. in the area of mental health. Oh, so it, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's an important thing, and I commend Superintendent Chaddock for taking the lead on it, and voters will have a chance to decide on that on the 7th of August. Wonderful. Well, State Representative Kirk Schuring, we uh, thank you so much for, uh, first of all, clarifying what in the world was going on yeah. there, and that really helped. And God bless you. What what great work you are doing for us and for your community. Well, thank you. It's my honor to have had the uh, privilege of serving the people of Stark County for so long, and hopefully I'll have a chance to do it for many years to come.